Well, hello again, everyone. This is your humble correspondent and friend, Turd, with another fun and informative TFMR podcast. Today, we have ourselves a treat and a half in that uh, we get a chance to visit with the one and only golden jackass himself, Jim Willie. Uh, most of you are familiar with Jim and his work. It, he runs a newsletter now that he's been doing now for eight years after spending quite a bit of time as a statistical analyst in marketing research. But eight years ago, he started the Hat Trick Letter, which you can find at goldenjackass.com, all one word. And I would give everyone a hearty thumbs up and ask them to uh, give some strong consideration to subscribing because it, it is full of great information. He's almost up to his 100th letter, which I think we'll have to pop the corks and, uh, and celebrate when that happens, Jim. But and Jim, thank you for spending a little time here in Turdville. We're, I know everybody's really excited to hear from you. Yeah, the jackass meets the turd. What do you think, huh? How could that be? That, there's something profane about that. I like it. Jim, I tell you, I'm, I'm so excited we get to talk today. It's Friday the 11th of May. Uh, it's about 10.30 Central Time uh, as we speak. And uh, big news overnight in uh, what was going on. It looks like what J.P. Morgan has been working on for quite some time was suddenly really spinning out of, the con out of control to the point where uh, Master Daimon himself had to come out and address it yesterday. I would imagine you've got some thoughts on this. What, what do you think is going on there? Well, first of all, very little of what the company officially says is true. Um, to begin with, my sources are telling me that the loss is not two billion; it's eighteen billion, and the company is claiming that they've got some losses from sovereign debt in Europe from the last six weeks. Well, a little research, nothing really complex, shows that the ten-year Italian bond has gone from five percent to five and a half. That's not huge. The French bond has gone from two point eight to three point zero. Oh. That's not huge. Nope. The Greek bond has gone from 35% down to 20, so that's gone the other direction. So I would say, J.P. Morgan, once again, you're a liar. Not telling the truth, are they? No, they're not. So what you got is a backdrop where a lot of big banks, I mean, in particular the big European banks, are in trouble. <laughs> for, instance, away. <laughs> for instance, Deutsche Bank is in real big trouble. Um, Many of these big banks have been insolvent for three or four years. Let's face it, when Lehman died uh, or was killed, executed for convenience, um, a lot of these big Western banks went insolvent, sought out bailouts, were nationalized. They have not come back from the dead. They've remained insolvent. The new recent problem for them is that in the last several weeks, the last two or three months, they're really suffering from insolvency and illiquidity as their bonds are, are really getting hurt. They're involved with a lot of quick turnover of the sovereign bonds in Europe. And, and let's face it, this long-term refinance operation, the LTRO, that Draghi at the European Central Bank has started, it's been a disaster. Right. It, the lending has all turned negative. And it reflects immediately and, and dangerously on the big European banks. So the, the, uh, the other thing I'd like to say is, are we not looking at a liquidity problem that's draining on Wall Street banks, in particular J.P. Morgan, which could provide a prima facie case for a motive to having stolen the MF Global private accounts? It certainly seemed, well, we all thought that at the time. Um, at, at, we, on one side of it, though, how much were they actually able to steal? I mean, uh, compared to the problem that they're, the hole they dug themselves in with this latest uh, issue that was announced yesterday, the amount that they stole from, from MF Global seems minuscule. Well, it could be, except that the amount stolen is a lot larger than what they admitted. It, it really wasn't. Remember when we first heard it was $600 million, then right. I, I joked with some friends. It wasn't really a joke. I said, well, you know, don't worry. In a month or so, we'll be, it'll be revealed that it was 2 or $3 billion. Well, it, it's, it's, it's big money. Uh, what we're seeing <clears throat> is lack of liquidity really starting to hurt. And uh, 
I got I got some information that revealed to me, <clears throat> pardon me, that J.P. Morgan is acting as intermediary for a, a lot of these big European banks to help hold them together, and and they're trying to hold together Deutsche Bank. It's a major project right now. Deutsche Bank has been insolvent for some time, and I, I, I'm, I'm being told that they're likely not going to survive the next round of this financial crisis. And what a gigantic tree falling in the woods Deutsche Bank would oh, be. Oh, good heavens, yes. We, we've been seeing, this. there's a phenomenon that's been going on now for several months, had been going on for several months, like in October, November, and December, January. It was Wall Street providing a lot of of credit and liquidity for the big European banks regarding derivatives and swaps and all kinds of things which means that back then Wall Street was creating the exposure conduit to Europe so whatever happened bad to Europe would happen to Wall Street mm -hmm. and all the arguments that we heard for instance that uh, oh no it's isolated it's firewalled oh bull no it was a gigantic conduit was created last fall and early winter until the Fed came in and the Europeans quickly tapped three trillion dollars and and then the Wall Street exposure and assistance stopped because the Fed took it over and now the Fed's in control of that the Fed's in control of that but what is the Fed it's JP Morgan mm, yeah. JP Morgan is the operating arm for the US Federal Reserve so the, Fed, the, the Wall Street banks found themselves exhausted and overextended, and what we're seeing is some of the after effects being felt by the biggest of the Wall Street banks, J.P. Morgan. <clears throat> the Fed tried to prevent a collapsing situation. Uh, this, is, this is really enormous. They're, they're trying to say, the, 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 the J.P. Morgan folks are trying to say, oh, this is all European problem all European sovereign debt. It's all from the losses related to European sovereign bonds. Well, I don't believe that's the case. Rob Kirby and I had a conversation this morning, and I, I think what is happening is, is just the opposite. Uh, you got 88 percent of the, no, 82 percent of the derivative book for JP Morgan tied up in interest rate derivatives. I mean, how on earth has the U.S. government issued one and a half trillion dollars of new debt with foreign buyers stepping aside and yet rates are going down? They yes. say it's a fight to quality. It's a bunch of bull. It's Again, they're buying. What's happening is that the interest rate swap has been used heavily and Morgan Stanley put on eight trillion alone in December. Well, what was the number we saw, Jim, at the, in the back half of 2011? Didn't the overall amount of CDS in the world grow by a hundred, whatever it was, a hundred trillion dollars or whatever the, was, the number was? That's the CDS, the credit default swaps against insuring the bonds. I'm referring to interest rate derivatives. Okay. They've got seven times as much, JP Morgan has seven times as much interest rate drivers that are that's interest rate swaps how can the government the US government keep interest rates down in the two percent zone when they're coming up with gigantic issuance of treasury bonds and foreigners are not buying exactly them. exactly and they're claiming so that the Fed isn't okay. buying them directly so what has happened in the last six weeks the French and Italian bonds have only gone up a little bit in yield a little bit and Greeks have gone down. You hear J.P. Morgan and Diamond talking about Greece, Greece, Greece. No, Greece has improved. Mm -hmm. What has changed? Well, two months ago, the 10-year bond went up to 2.3 percent. And now it's come back down again. The Fed was making stupid talk about how they're going to have a return to normalcy, an exit strategy, and, and bring about what used to be you know, the, the, the normal range of interest rates for, for borrowing costs and bond yields. They tried something and it failed and now you're seeing JP Morgan suffer gigantic losses. My guess is from a trial balloon 
of the Fed trying to normalize interest rates and raise. So J.P. Morgan, because right, this sure makes a lot of sense, Jim. So J.P. Morgan, as part of the, uh, let's just say, the working group of helping the Fed keep their zero interest rate policy, uh, as a part of that, they have taken on this enormous book of interest rate swaps uh, that has given them uh, a really an uh, almost darn near infinite exposure if rates were to actually go back up to even 3%. And right. when, when the 10-year went from 1.9 to 2.4, which we talked about quite a bit here on the site, um, that put such tremendous pressure on those, and those are the losses that you think J.P. Morgan now is seeing, and it amounts to a considerable amount more money than what they're telling. Right, and they don't want to have focus on interest rate swaps and their losses therein because that's the mechanism that they bring about a false price of money right. and return on bond yields. Instead, they talk about a flight to quality, which is not there. Right. Well, and I guess as this pertains to the precious metals, it is just more proof. Uh, this is more of a fundamental proof than it is, you know, just this kind of specious uh, QE to infinity that we all talk about. This is more proof that under no circumstances can interest rates ever, ever be allowed to rise. Because how can one this? How could they ever unwind this position? And any uptick in rates only exacerbates this problem that we're seeing now with the announcement yesterday. So how can rates ever go higher? And if they can't ever go higher, and if we're always going to be in ZERP, all you're ever going to see is, is, is metals going higher. I think the U.S. is stuck with 0% forever, and the forever will end when the U.S. government has a restructure of its debt, which is otherwise called a debt default. Mm -hmm. the, the big side story to a lot of what's going on here and this is not getting in the news, and I, I bloody well want to cover it. And, and I'm sure you're not going to you know, block my path here at all. <laughs> These big European and Wall Street banks and London banks are, have been insolvent for quite a long time. Yes. And you could bring about FASB accounting rules and say, all right, don't worry about it. Just price by yourself whatever you want on all these assets. It doesn't make them insolvent. It just makes their stock look better. Right, or it doesn't make them solvent. I right. Mean, they're they're and, still... And they're suffering from illiquidity. Right. The liquidity problems are coming because the LTRO didn't work for rescuing European banks. It, it's coming because a lot of these sovereign bonds are, are going down in value, and, and this is not stoppable. I mean, gosh, you, you have the European Central Bank buying huge amounts of, of southern European bonds, yet the bonds are still going up in yield. So they're very frustrated, and the Euro Central Bank is ruining their balance sheet. They can't stop it. So what is the practical effect, and this is how it comes back to gold, the practical effect is these big banks, I mean, I don't care if it's Society General of France or Credit Agricole that's in the news or Deutsche Bank, Heck, it could even be Barclays of London. But these banks are insolvent, and now they're illiquid, and they're getting margin calls. And I'm hearing from my source that it's not just the sovereign bonds that they're getting margin calls on. I mean, you're, you're seeing a lot of demand for dollars in the, the, uh, the euro-dollar swap, the LIBORs, buy bank. That shows how SOSGEN is in problem in, in, a, in a big dire straits situation right now. But these big banks are getting margin calls, not only from sovereign bonds, but also their currencies. Uh, as the dollar swap facility has been tapped for three trillion in the last just two, three months in Europe, three trillion dollars, what they do is they borrow dollars and they transfer it into demand for euros to help out these big banks. They've, sure, they've got a lot of dollar exposure, but they've got a lot of bond exposure too that's denominated <clears throat> in euros. Mm -hmm. So these big European banks are getting giant margin calls for bonds and currencies. And, and, the East, and, and here's the conclusion. Here's the, you know, the zip line, the, the final zinger at the end. These big Eastern forces 
that have a 50 billion or more dollar war chest are forcing the gold cartel banks to give up their gold to get out of the margin calls in order to raise the cash. Some of the gold is being sold to raise money for the cash, but a lot of the gold is just going straight into eastern hands, primarily China, and my guess is JP Morgan is tapping in a very big way the GLD fund from the back door, which they have access to. Is that part of uh, what's going on uh, as you speculate and can think about Deutsche Bank? Or is Deutsche yeah, sure. They've got problems with their sovereign bonds from Southern Europe. They're getting margin calls, so they're being re forcibly removed from the gold. And a couple of frustrated clients and friends of mine, colleagues, are saying, well, gee, with all this Chinese and Eastern demand for gold, the price of gold should be going up. It's not. When they're done with a, a certain price point, like 1620, they push it down. The Eastern guys, the Chinese, the good guys, push the price down to 1610. Then they get all the gold they can there. Then they push it down to 1600. They get all the gold they can there. Then they push it to 1590. They get all the gold they can there. Then they push it down to 1580. And they get all the gold. You see the pattern. Yeah. It's not the man pushing the price up. It's satisfying deadly orders to drain the cartel member banks, and then they push it lower. And, and, and increase the pressure in, on the bank to fork over the gold, and that yes. it's becoming less and less valuable to the bank. Well, less and less available, and it's more vacant in their vaults. Right. What's, the, what's the end game on this? This is what's described to me by by one of my sources, and it's it's a shocking conclusion. He says, in two years, give or take, the cartel banks will not own any gold. Now, we've been looking for years. When are we going to see release of the gold price? How about when the cartel doesn't have any more gold? Yeah. It would definitely lessen their incentive to try to manipulate it if they don't have it anymore. But they're going to fight like a dickens, I'm sure, in the meantime. No, 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 wait. No, they'll still have incentive, Craig. They're holding short derivatives. They're holding short naked futures contracts. They're not going to have the tools with which to defend their short position which is physical gold. They'll be defenseless. They'll be like a ship at sea in a storm with zero ballast. Right. Well, and if you think about the the leverage that they've always used, be it 100 to 1, 40 to 1, 200 to 1, every ounce of gold that they lose costs them 100 ounces of leverage. Exactly. Leverage is a very big issue right now because this deleveraging process Look, you got two big forces going on. The Volcker Rule, which was about deleveraging, but also about proprietary trading and separation of that from, from you know, client accounts. I mean, that, that didn't help MF Global accounts, did it? The, no. the second force is Basel II rules. Uh, the Swiss castles have been dictating the central banks to put out orders regarding the big banks country across country uh, to, you know, Lower your reserves, I'm sorry, increase your reserves requirement and lower your leverage. So this is working against Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is to Germany what J.P. Morgan is to the United States. I'll go as far as to say I think what we're seeing now is a death event, a death, D-E-A-T-H, event of J.P. Morgan. But it's not that simple. You cannot have J.P. Morgan die. You can only have it suffer a horrible, endless death process yeah. that never results in death. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's like they're in, uh, uh, like a brain dead patient or someone that's just there um, that, that they're keeping alive. Or a bigger and uglier and more dangerous zombie. Yeah. So let me, let me see if I can uh, kind of sum this up. Let's go back and kind of put all these pieces together for a second, Jim. So the European banks, um, they're all insolvent, as many of the in the U.S. are. In Europe, though, as I understand it, the, the critical difference is that they're all levered together. One bank's assets are pledged as collateral into another, and that's pledged again. And so as 
the collateral declines in value, in this case the sovereign debt, they're getting margin calls. There is no liquidity, so they don't have enough dollars to meet the margin calls. And so these banks instead, uh, I guess to meet their obligations, are instead forking over their gold. Is that about right? Yeah, but look what happens when the price of gold falls. They get in even more trouble. It gets worse, yeah. yeah. So the falling gold price, a lot of gold community folks see as being a problem. It's bringing about the accelerated drainage of the cartel banks of their gold. I mean, we can say, oh, this is horrible, and my, my account's going down. This is horrible. I can't take it with my, my vault account, and my mining stocks are down, and I'm losing a lot of... This is how the gold price is released yeah. from its criminal grip on the neck by the London and New York bankers. Let me make a quick point regarding French banks. If you're a student of history back in 71, a lot of attention was given to Charles de Gaulle and how he demanded for, I believe, a one month or, you know, a set, no, there was one particular demand he made for five billion dollars worth of U.S. gold when the U.S. was on the gold standard still dictated by Bretton Woods. Right. Well, Nixon went off. Nixon said, no, go to hell, de Gaulle. This was not 71. This is when Nixon was in power in 72, 72 to 76. And I believe Nixon was behind the JFK murder. Um, <laughs> not Jim. Yeah. That's a whole other topic for another yeah, day. Yeah, I know. That's a whole other to topic. But uh, you know, there are a lot of people who might have been involved. And, uh, you know, a lot of talk that I've heard recently that JFK, JFK spent his last vegetable years in a Greek island. And that's why Jackie, Ona Jackie Kennedy married Onassis. Why would Jackie be curious why would she be romantically involved with Onassis? It's part of a bigger deal. Anyway, apart from all that, let's go back to the French banks here. So back in the 70s, the early 70s, the French were taking in gold. Right. All right, now we see Soch Gen with a real problem with their LIBOR swap. We see all the French banks in trouble. We see their stocks in trouble. We see their reserves in trouble. All right, my guess is that all three major French banks, Soch Gen, BNP Paribas and Credit Agricole, who's very much in the news lately, uh, all three of them are seeing their gold drained in hyperdrive. And where is it going? It's probably going to Chinese and other eastern locations to fortify their next plan, probably for an alternative to the SWIFT program, transaction program, we're, we're seeing now that the early stages of Eastern nations reacting to Iran sanctions, Eastern nations reacting to swift abuse by the U.S. government, I'm sure with the help of the British. Yep. These Eastern nations led by China are going to be coming up with a swift alternative. It's not really going to be a swift. It's going to be more, more like trade settlement and I'm hearing it's going to have a whiff of gold behind it. Sure. I'm, I mean, it, these are a lot of rumors, and I'm hearing a few specifics. I'm just going to say loosely it's going to have a gold element behind it. And this is not dollar-based. In order to get a gold core for both a larger barter system of trade and a trade settlement system that's centered on gold and paper backed by gold, these Eastern nations, we're not just talking about Iran, we're talking about Japan, Korea, China, India, Turkey, Russia. Uh, Russia. They're going to need a lot of gold, so they're draining the West of gold, and they found a method. They're exploiting the sovereign debt problem of Europe. They're exploiting how the Americans in late 2011, U.S. banks provided a conduit of funds to Europe. So whatever happens to Europe is happening to Wall Street. Diamond came out yesterday and said this is not a systemic Wall Street problem. Listen to his topic. Ignore his words because you need to capture the true message, which is it is a systemic problem across Wall Street, and it's not entirely sovereign bonds. It is interest rate swaps and accidents for when the Fed did a mindless trial balloon of trying to raise interest rates and get back to normalcy with their so-called exit strategy, which I called in 2009 
a pure piece of rubbish. And it is. And and yeah. as as we know, they cannot. There is no. They cannot. It is. It was from a deficit funding standpoint to a national debt standpoint to the interest on the national debt to more importantly these impacts on these interest rate swaps as you were talking about there's no way they, they, that is to move off of ZERP would be impossible well look at Japan Craig Japan they have it and they had a trade surplus they were they still are an industrial powerhouse they're less so with China let's face it Japan is moving technology to Chinese to Chinese locations so that their factories can exploit the lower cost of labor but Japan has a lot of advantages that the United States does not have and Japan could not get out of zero percent you think the US can? Of course yeah. not yeah. this is a trial balloon that blew up in Bernanke's face and did serious damage to Diamond who's got other problems regarding the theft of MF Global funds that's still not fully resolved. I think we're going to see more court cases, more state court cases, not federal. And, and now that this, this collapse of the sovereign debt in southern Europe, this is now being used by eastern entities, in particular China, and, and Russia is involved in this. Russia never is in the news. Russia has I'm hearing 10 to 30 times as much gold as they report. Well, They've they, got caverns. They, and they mine it themselves, and it never sees the market. That, that's just the margin, Craig. Yeah, well. They've got 300-year-old, you know, Romanov dynasty, Peter right. the Great gold. I mean, they've got Catherine the Great gold. It's all in underground cavern systems under the Kremlin that rivals what's in Rome. Oh, boy. No. Well, now, Jim, let me, uh, in, uh, in the time we have remaining, I do want to take a second, and um, it's been a crazy week in Europe. It's only getting uh, more crazy. Um, I wrote a thing earlier this week speculating that it's really just a matter of time before uh, the euro dissolves uh, as we've known it for the last 20 years will not continue. Um, I would imagine you've got some thoughts on where we might, where that might all be headed. It's all, it's a big, it's a piece of this puzzle that you've laid out and put together for us. Um, how do you think that's all going to play out with what's happening in France, the situation in Spain uh, and Italy on top of Greece? Well, I, I've got a different perspective on on a lot of things, including this. I, I shared your view until a few months ago. I thought that the a, a new German-led currency was going to come about, like a Nordic euro or a euro mark or yeah. northern euro, call it whatever you want. But the Germans were going to break off. And, and the joke in Germany was, no, they're not going to leave the euro. They're going to take the euro. Right. What does that mean? It means they're going to kick off their gangrenous southern legs. Right. What's left to the euro after the south is gone? A strong euro. Mm -hmm. Euro's not going to vanish. The euro is going to be new and improved and trimmed down with missing gangrene in the legs. Right, exactly. Okay, so then what Germany could do later is say, now, in order to fortify the euro, we're kicking out France, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, Italy. We're kicking out all these insolvent legs. And we're going to retain uh, a lot of our old friends like the Netherlands and Finland and Austria and maybe a couple more that involve banking centers. I believe the euro is going to be revitalized because it's going to trim down and get rid of all of its garbage. Right. Right. What's perceived to be euro negative in the short run is actually euro positive in strength. If France and Italy, just those two countries, go back to the franc and the lira, the euro is going to get a rise. Absolutely. But not until some things get resolved, like some dead banks with some euro obligations. So it's not going to be simple. The revitalization of the euro is going to be on the other side of a big shice storm. Yeah, yeah. Brown stuff coming down in chunks. Big brown stuff. Hey, turds, right? Turds, there turds. You go. There you go. But <laughs> let me let me continue in this vein. The Germans might decide this thing, the euro, 
needs some legitimacy. So we're going to have some new parts and old parts, and the old parts are going to be tied to a lot of European bank exposure that's denominated in euros, tied with Southern Europe, and maybe they'll come up with some bad bank, good bank. I don't know, but I expect before long the Germans are going to announce that they're going to have a gold component to the new revitalized post-pigs era. At the same time, that will expose a risk. And, and there's some, some good analysis out there. You know, here's the point. Any legitimate currency that comes out, like if it's Germany alone with, with their best friends, let's just say that for instance. Yeah. Well, it's going to rise in exchange rate. It's going to rise. It's going to be a victim of its own success right. because th their export trade will be overpriced on products they hope to export. But, 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 big, big but. Let's suppose Russia comes out with a gold component to their new ruble. Mm -hmm. The Chinese move quickly from a convertible yuan to a gold component in the yuan. And just to tag along, because they love to tag along, the Arabs in the Persian Gulf decide the time is right. We got Russian and Chinese protection for the Gulf. And we're going to d now discard the petrodollar and we're going to move toward a gold backed dinar. Then you've got the new euro, the new ruble, the new yuan, and the new dinar that provide a rather significant core to global trade. So it's more, it, it's not so much like the Germans are victims of their own successful new currency. It will be more like these four trading countries together with the support of India and Japan and Korea and countries like that, they're going to have a sufficient core whereby parts of Europe, the U.S. and the U.K. are going to be in the minority. Yes. They're going to be on the outside looking in. They're going to be the ones holding the crappy fiat currency that must bid up these four dynamic new currencies, and you're not going to see Germany a victim of their own success in currency development, monetary reform, what you're going to see is Western Europe, U.S., and England enter the third world. Jim, you're ab... God, it always frightens me when I say this. Jim, you are absolutely correct. You are... I mean, I agree 100% with that final analysis. There's no question in my mind that it's going to work very closely to what, to what you just described. And for the U.S., it may not be a de facto approval of that happening, but the only way the U.S. can even begin to address all of their debt issues is to devalue the currency, and once all of that other groundwork is laid in place, the U.S. will do it. Not only devalue their currency, but restructure their debt. It, it, as well, in, the, the value as in, in, at, yeah. at default. Yes, that allows them. Yeah, exactly. It's I believe a, that there's going to be a movement, and I'm hearing rumblings on this, but I really don't want to focus on it too much. But there's going to be a movement where elements of the U.S. government, its military and security agencies, attempt to repair and reform the dollar and move away from the old dollar and toward a healthier new dollar and repudiate a lot of debt and, and suffer the consequences with their own American shice storm of little turds coming down from the heavens. And, and you know, this is the process that the U.S. is going to go through, but I don't think they're going to get out of the third world. The third world has many definitions. Corrupt elections, well, we've got that. It's got uh, broken bridges, we've got that. We've got trillion dollar bond fraud, yeah, they got that too. Yep. You've got corruption in the finance, got that. You've got phony printing of money, you got that. You've got uh, dumbing down of the masses, you got that. Crime throughout finance, you got that. And <clears throat> what's going to happen, unfortunately, is the U.S. is going to have to bid up the good currencies that are going to dominate world trade. And it's going to require the dollar to go down, and that means higher prices. We're going to see hyperinflation in the United States, but only when the dollar loses its global reserve status, only when the dollar is not the center of global trade settlement, and it's in progress right now. It is coming. What's going to have to happen for Germany, Russia, China, and the Arabs is they're going to have to get some major stones below the belt to do it. 
I don't think they have the uh, eventually their hand is going to be and not that their hands going to be forced that makes it sound like they'll be dragged unwillingly into it. it it's going to happen. I don't see how it does not happen. Jim. What what I've heard for the last 18 months from some really good sources in particular one is the preparations are being made. It's it's now being made with an alternative to Swift. I'm I'm hearing things like Global trade settlement can be could be conducted on blackberries in a decentralized yeah. fashion yeah. regarding using using the non-dollar settlement and the, the the new paper that has a whiff of gold to it. Yeah, you just sign up for a, you know some credit on gold and you manage it and you yeah. get it all done. Okay, when these things happen, the, the U.S. dollar is going to be in in you know it's going to be outside looking in left in the dust. And, and the, the main point from 18 months ago that I've been hearing over and over again is that the barter system and, and the alternative for trade settlement, these are preparations being made. And the fellow I talked to was in charge personally on a small team of the dollar kill switch, which we've mentioned before on your show. It's where the Arabs and OPEC nations, in particular the Saudis, who lead pretty much that whole movement, the Saudis agree that they will not necessarily require dollars for oil payments. And and that's the end of the dollar. So that's the end. So these these nations are waiting for the West to collapse in its financial structure, its banking system, its sovereign bonds, and they will step in like like riders on white horses and say, We've got something. Let's start using it. Mm -hmm. If the Americans want to use it too, fine. But we don't expect they, them, or the British to want to. And you know, then you got the Southern Europeans going back to the lira, the peseta, the escudo, and the franc, and the drachma. They're going to have to bid up the good currencies, so they're going to suffer heavy price inflation. And and did I mention shortage? No, I didn't. No, yeah, that's coming too. Inflation and shortage. So th the four major forces of Germany, Russia, China, and the Arab, Persian Gulf Arabs. I mean, I'm not talking about Syrian Arabs. We're talking about Persian Gulf, right. oil-rich Arabs. Right. They're going to decide, all four of them together, I think, to launch together because it will be strengthened numbers and reduced risk from successful exchange rate consideration. This is powerful. The, the, this is the next stage of the global financial and trade and banking structure. It's not going to be dollar centric. It's going to be these new currencies. I believe we're going to see a new euro mark, a new ruble, a new yuan, and a new dinar in time. And when one comes, the 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 induced for the other is is going to be so powerful. Yeah. We better do it now. The time is right. Yep. We got the Germans behind us. There'll be strength in numbers. It's like it's like creating a raft. The the more logs you have on the raft, and the, and the stronger the rope you have, that the rope the strong rope is from the gold backing. It's a and good it's metaphor. Gonna, oh, it's a very good metaphor. And you know what you got now on the other side of the pond is is waterlogged, debt logged, waterlogged, debt logged. Big no rope. big. Uh, we call it logs. Graft poles, and they're they're sinking because they're loaded with debt. Well, if, if you've got new logs that are got golden centers, yeah, they're not waterlogged. I mean, that's a bad analogy because gold would sink. They would make a levy. You know, don't worry about that. I well, may, maybe think of it as uh, really good ballast. Would Jim, you? I, I always like to talk about what Buffett and those clowns have to say, and Eric. Sprott ripped them a new a hole. Yes, Sorry, he did. no, but oh. he did, and they yes. I mean, gosh, uh, Munger, Buffett, and Gates. Sorry, guys, but you missed the entire gold trade last decade, where gold went up five hundred percent more than your lousy stocks. So you're not an authority on gold. Yeah, yeah, we're going to ask their opinion. A liar. Warren Buffett is a liar. So, so Jim, you, you're saying right. it, it, it with all this that we've talked about. Um, you're you're probably in there selling what gold you have at, at fifteen eighty, aren't you? You're just getting out and converting it back to dollars, aren't you? I know you are. <laughs> I'd I'd rather invest in used bicycles. <laughs> 
Well, I really want to thank you for taking this time this morning because uh, you've laid out, well, I, I get brought proper context to this story yesterday. So many of you are looking at it as just this one-off thing and this London whale trader guy who built too big of a position in one certain thing and couldn't hedge it anymore and boy, they lost a couple billion dollars and now that's it. And it's not. It is part of that as a reflection of the zero interest rate policy and what that is doing and how that's connected to sovereign debt and how that's connected to gold and how that is leading us down this path to this new world which may not start tomorrow but will start and will probably catch well no not probably will catch almost everyone completely flat-footed when this new paradigm emerges whether it next week or five years from now, but it is most definitely coming, and I, I think you've done a wonderful job of connecting it all, and I, and I know we all very much appreciate it. Well, it's my pleasure to be on, and I, I urge people to check out goldenjackass.com. I've got a newsletter called The Hat Trick Letter, and the two main reports for it are I call the Money War Report. This is not a global financial crisis. This is a monetary war, and mm -hmm. the, the instrument of destruction is the dollar and treasury bond. I've got another report called the Golden Currency Report, and uh, that's full of stories of, of what's going on in the gold market. What you're seeing with J.P. Morgan is primarily an interest rate swap phenomenon with heavy losses because they've got an $800 trillion derivative book. Over 80% of it is interest rate swaps, and you've seen a lot of gyrations of the long-term rates. I can guarantee you, you're going to see a rally in Treasury bonds to help them out. Yes. But yes. but you cannot deny the other piece of what's going on, which is laying very vulnerable the big European and by association through conduits, the Wall Street and London banks. London's got enormous southern uh, European sovereign debt exposure. So you can't dismiss the big sovereign debt exposure that's creating illiquidity and the big opportunity for draining gold from the big western banks. All three centers, Europe, London, New York, they're all being drained of their gold. And my suspicion is we're going to see some amplified effects to the GLD real soon, the exchange traded fund, because I'm thinking it's getting drained <clears throat> in hyperdrive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, People don't own any gold in GLD, they own paper certificates, and they're going to be a lot of lawsuits. They're going to have a real challenge maintaining the GLD share price and make sure it doesn't sell at a 25 to 35 percent discount to the spot gold price. That's would, their next challenge. That would be the thing to watch, just as yeah. we watch the the premium in the in the spot funds that trade. But the premium in spot goes up because they buy gold and silver. Right, premium exactly. in GLD and SLV goes down because they don't. Exactly. That's exactly correct. Well, Jim, we appreciate your visit into Turdland. I have to, I have to joke for a second because you referred to somebody named Craig a couple of times, and I don't know who that guy is. He must be who you were talking to before you. Oh, I have, I have two friends named Craig. I must be, I must be. Uh, you know, you're getting older. You're starting, you know, the mental thing is starting to get away. Didn't you just I'm turn? Getting older. I'm not getting. Older. I'm getting a year younger every year. <laughs> At least your girlfriends are. That's, no, that's supposed from, to work. That's from Central American diet, free from Monsanto free from the, the poisoned air, and free from the poison news, and free from the poison television ads of pharmaceuticals. I'm, I'm quite healthy, thank you. And it's those lovely uh, Central American ladies that you get to uh, cavort with from time to time, too, I'm sure helps. I try to limit myself to 12 girlfriends at a time. <laughs> God bless you, Jim. Thank you, my friend, for stepping into Turdville for a few minutes. Uh, I, on behalf of, of everybody who just listened to this, because I know they're all saying thank you as well. So on behalf of them, let me thank you. And uh, I hope we can uh, visit again sometime soon. Oh, for sure we will. And I hope that your listeners also sign up for the hat trick letter. Oh, yeah. a lot thank you stuff. for, again, prompting that. You'll see everybody that's listening to this, look in the text to the right of the microphone where I've written you know, a little summary. You'll see a, a link right there to the goldenjackass.com and the hat trick letter please I mean, if you want if you find this information valuable and you don't want to get left behind uh, I would strongly suggest you sign up and as you, as you get to that page you'll notice it's Jim's made it quite affordable for everybody and to that we should thank him
or for that. All right, very good. Thanks for everything. You're the man. Have a great weekend. You too. Bye.